Welcome to Health, Wellbeing and Lifestyle, where we love to educate and inspire the community to live more healthily, feel more balanced and truly live a lifestyle they love. And today for our first guest, we have Pauline Rooney, a, health, a Yoga for Wellbeing instructor and author. And first in a series, the topic today is mental health. So Pauline, welcome. Thanks, Linda. It's great to be here. It really is. So Pauline, how can yoga assist people with mental health? Oh, Linda, it's unbelievable the assistance that people can have by learning very simple techniques. Breathing is the powerhouse. It's absolutely the powerhouse. When it comes to mental health, we have so many areas. There's anxiety, there's depression, there's bipolar and on and on. And all of these illnesses, if you like, can truly be assisted with the power of our breathing. And I just love the breathing because we take it in our seasons. So we breathe for summer, autumn, winter and spring. So you see, we all have different mental feelings at these different times. Some people find that they have what's called SADS, seasonally adjusted disorder. Right? You've heard of that, I'm sure. And so consequently, we breathe differently and that settles our mind and calms us. So the breath, I cannot stress enough on the power of that. And when we're talking about breath, we're not just talking about breathing. Much deeper than that, we focus on the breath coming in through the nostrils, right into the base of the lungs and then we talk a lot about the diaphragm, how it drops down to let the breath in, pushes up to let the breath out. So that's a part of really learning that technique of the diaphragm coming in and out, focusing on which nostril is breathing best. I know this all sounds a bit interesting, but when you learn it, the power in this to steady your mind and refocus and if you're anxious about something, your mind then starts to play games. It, it, I call it run a riot, but it, it does. And it thinks of things that are totally irrelevant. However, if we can come back to focus on that breath in and out through the nose and focus it going into the lungs, flowing out, focusing on each nostril in turn, all of those types of things, we settle immediately, right? And that is what is so important, to bring the focus to one point. It's when the, the mind shatters out, if you like, and that's going here and there and absolutely everywhere, we feel out of control. So as soon as we come to one point, the mind seems to have time to recollect. And in the yoga, so many of the professionals are using now breathing techniques, other techniques that we have in the yoga, physical techniques, and some people need the physical aspect of the yoga to really push through their body and feel the, what it's doing for them. But with that, of course, Linda, every posture requires breathing. So when we move our arm, we don't pop it up in the air. We choose to breathe in to lift and breathe out to put down. So when you breathe in, everything is lighter, right? So it makes the mind lighter. It's a fabulous way to get into thinking of life, mental health or not. If we can all just breathe that beautiful, deep, deep, breath, we'd all have a lot of calm alive. So I think, I don't think I know. And it'd be wonderful for all of us to calm down, to think one thought at a time. And we try to do too many things. We try to do this, that and the other. And somehow or other, we've learned to have pride in how many things and jobs we can do at once. And that's confusing the brain, confusing our mindset. I'm a great believer in one job, one mind. And that requires one job, one mind, one breath, in and out. And that keeps us focused on that job. 
And if you've got mental health, you need to be able to focus on the job at hand. Otherwise, you feel you're not completing. You're not, and I'm sure you and I have both felt be, we've tried to do this and that and something else. We don't feel as though we've achieved everything successfully. Whereas if, and we probably haven't either, you know, but if we slowed that down and did one job with one breath, well, of course you're breathing in and out, but we say one breath, then you've completed that job calmly, completely, and with intent. So it's done much better. And then you go to the next one. But if you have a mental health issue, it doesn't matter across the spectrum of mental health. If we can really understand and appreciate that one breath, one job, bringing that mind back, I've, I know I've repeated it, it's just so, so important. There's many techniques in breathing. There's what we call the alternate nasal breathing. Uh, there's the, what we call Nadi Shodan. Then there's the breast streaker. It's the winter breath where you use your diaphragm to pump in and out, it warms and it really helps. Then there's the Kaplabati and that's spring and autumn. It's fabulous if you have hay fever or any of those types of things, which cause, if you ha suffer with those, you do have a lot of anxiety, right? It does lead to anxiety, I must say. Pauline, then what would be a takeaway for our viewers today? One of the best, simplest and fabulous takeaways, I believe, is using our tall man and thumb and bringing them together on both hands and it's so good, Linda. You can have it under the desk, under the coffee table, or while you're walking up the street. You pop those tall man and thumb together and it calms you down, right? So if you're feeling a bit nervous or anything like that, pop those two together and immediately you calm down. And if you have got mental health or, or issues across that line, it works splendidly well because it brings you back into that one mind, one breath, one job. And even for us, you know, we all get a little anxious, we all get a little nervous. So tall man and thumb on both hands, and that's the best tip I can give you. So well, thank you, Pauline, for today. And now we'll go to break. For more information on Pauline Rooney and Yoga for Wellbeing, then please go to her webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And after the break, we'll be back with another wonderful guest and another wonderful topic. And now our next guest is Diana Jacobson, who is a wealth advisor and is here today to talk to us about unlocking the wealthy you. Welcome, Diana. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. Just discovering the wealthy us inside. Yep. What do you suggest will be? Would it, people need any special tools or things okay. to go to do that? So let me explain this. The main thing we need is a magic wand. Okay, so to unlock the wealthy you, we're not just talking about finance and money and material things. We're talking about holistic wealth, that sense of well-being within us. So our health, our happiness, relationships, fun, love, laughter, our choices, you know, freedom, opportunities, doing the things that we enjoy, hanging out with the people that are fun, um, whether it's walking in nature, hobbies, art, music, all of those sorts of things that we want to do that, that make our life feel, feel great and make us feel wealthy because I know it sounds really cosmic, but people think that when I have money, then I'll be wealthy, but it actually works the other way around. And when we feel wealthy over all of those small things, when we feel abundance and prosperity with all of those small facets of our life, then we kind of magnetize and draw other things to us and we can start to build that. So I suggest if people get their magic wand and say, how would I like my life to look? Who is the wealthy me? How do I want to be? How do I want to feel? What what does that entail and start to have some fun with that. So the wand is to jump ahead of all the limitations. So I'm too old, I'm too young, I don't have enough money, I don't have the right education or somebody won't like it and, and then start to build that picture so that we can create it. Could anyone do this alone? 
Well, look, we need a team and then we build the team around us. The same as with building a house, we have, you know, carpenters and tilers and plumbers and electricians and painters and so on. We need the team of people to do the things that they're good at so that we can do the things that we're good at. So when it comes to financial and legal and business and all of those sorts of things that all of us need to take care of, households, individuals, families, business owners, we need to take responsibility for those things. So it's about building that team of those people that are our advisors and our mentors in the areas and working with them. So look at who we know about. So traditionally we know about the accountant. We know that we go to the accountant and normally that's to get our tax return done once a year. What we don't know is that perhaps we need to work with them on a more longer term strategy, whether that's around capital gains tax for future, whether it's GST, whatever's relevant to us. But what we need to know about the financial services regime in Australia now is that it's very narrow and accountants can only talk about tax and, and not about superannuation, for instance, or lending or legal or other things. So therefore, we do need a financial planner and people think that they only need a financial planner when they have money because that's what you do. However, we need a financial planner to look after our money. Predominantly, they look after our superannuation. So most people will have a superannuation fund from a job at some point. And there are always fees in superannuation, contrary to some of the advertising. So it's important that we make informed choices about what our super is invested in, what it's costing us. And something that a lot of people don't know is that there's insurances held in superannuation, personal insurances, things like life insurance, income protection and disability insurance. And that can be really beneficial and cost effective because a lot of families are underinsured because they don't have the cash flow, but they don't realise it can be through their super. You also need a solicitor, which historically people have had just to do their wills, they do them once, they park them there for 20 or 30 years and they don't revisit them again. They really should be looking at them a little bit more often. Have the understanding that a normal garden variety will doesn't cover a lot of the business entities. So if you've got a company or a family trust or something like that, and superannuation has its own rules. So just be mindful that the will that people set up years ago may not be relevant for their circumstances now. And also ask the question of your advisor there, your solicitor, around young children, so guardianship, testamentary trusts, so that assets are not handed direct to, to minor children, or to anyone under a disability, or just someone that you might not want to hand the capital to, but they can benefit from the, the proceeds of that for their welfare. And powers of attorney is another thing that people need to have in place, but they often don't. And that's something that acts uh, while you're still alive, so someone else can make decisions for you if necessary. A lot of the time people just have their spouse make those, uh, hold that power of attorney, but if you're going to be travelling overseas or travelling in a car, chances are you'll be with your spouse, so have someone else as well. Debt is a big part. Loans brokers have debt restructured. A lot of our leakages that erode the wealthy us come through poorly managed, poorly structured debt. And there are a lot of ways that our mortgages, business loans, car loans and credit cards could be better set up, more tax effective, uh, more cost effective. So get some good advice on that. And insurance brokers similarly. So general insurances, your house, your car, your contents, your business, make sure that that's covered properly. And the big kicker with this, with this team, is to have someone that leads it. So Individually, this won't be the thing for most people. They won't want to do this. They won't want to understand it and they won't want to know all the details. And nor should they. That's what those specialists are there for. But find someone in that, in that team that can lead that team and get that integrated and cohesive. Because where I see a lot of the leakages are all of these disparate pieces of advice, but nobody gets them to meet in the middle. So th there's not the cohesion in that, str in that strategy and structure. And Diana, could you give us an example of uh, maybe a case study or someone that, that has been helped in this way? Certainly. So a phone call might, might be around uh, managing money and in that would be what are your tax entities and you know, have you done your tax returns, have you prepared for you know, capital gains tax or something down the track, are you in, on track with GST or whatever might be relevant there. But then there are also the things in there, superannuation, is that being looked after? Are the insurances in place? 
For a family that might be eligible for Centrelink, there'll be things like family tax benefit or perhaps a disability support pension or for older people, pre-retirement, so not to leave any of that planning till the last minute so that the financial planner can get things in place for any eligibility for age pension and later on for age care. Obviously in that comes estate planning as well, so that's a solicitor and making sure the wills and, and so forth are up to date and people looking to clear out their home mortgage or make sure that they're not having leakages uh, unnecessarily through that field. So there's your loans broker. And obviously we all have insurance over our properties and there's your insurance broker. So for one conversation about how can I retain more of my money, how can I make sure that my, my affairs are sorted and that I don't have to think about them and I'm going out do, you know, doing my fun stuff, um, straight away there's five different qualifications needed to have that conversation about how to plug the gaps and, and retain more of your wealth, protect your assets, minimise tax, um, maximise your cash flow and not have to think about it. What would you say that people could take away? What would you be, be your top tip for them to take away today for the viewers out there? Is not to make it too hard. Like have some fun with the magic wand with how do I want this to look and how do I want to be as the wealthy me in all aspects of life. Find the team that you trust and can communicate with, but take the first step. When you take one step towards a goal, the universe will bring that goal one step towards you. Thank you, Diana. That's just wonderful. Um, for more information on Diana, please go to our website. Welcome back. And we have Dr. Zara Chelik back with us today, our integrative health and wellness expert. And she's talking to us about detoxing your life. So Dr. Zara, what is detoxing your life? Absolutely. So usually when we talk about detoxing life, people usually associate detoxification with a juice cleanse or a fasting experience that may try in their own uh, daily lives. Uh, but it is more than that. Um, when, when I talk about detoxing life, I'm referring to being mindful at mind, body, spiritual, environmental level and even more because what we think, our thought process, what we say um, is also contributing to how we feel and also plays a role also what energy we create and radiate out in our environment uh, within ourselves and also in our workspace and with our loved ones. And of course there's the detoxification uh, of the physical body which is you know detoxing uh, and giving a break to your organs um, and you know again when it comes to detoxing at physical level it is by individual so I will encourage people to see what suits their needs um, and to work on detoxing the physical body at that level but having said that though our body our organs are always detoxing for us but it is important that we support our detoxification organs and you know some of the organs that are involved in detoxification is our liver our gut health our gut itself the digestive uh, tract um, our skin uh, you know skin pores if they're open with sweating and through the sweating we are also detoxing so body is very intelligent at it, what it does uh, on its own but it is you know it is uh, a great idea uh, you know something that I suggest people to really clean the skin clean um, the skin pores are clean so then the body is detoxing efficiently through the skin pores as well. It is also a good idea to pay attention how your digestive health is performing like we did in our last interview uh, as well as you know how the liver is doing uh, and also are we having the right foods to take the load off the liver because liver loaders uh, could be such as you know uh, alcohol uh, or uh, deep fatty fried foods they can sort of add burden to the liver which means the detoxification can become sluggish because liver is involved in uh, physical detoxification process and there is of course the lymphatic system when it comes to detoxing at the physical level uh, and the lymphatic system uh, can need a bit of that you know, boost time to time. So getting a nice regular lymphatic drainage massage can also help and support the lymphatic system as well as the physical detoxification system as well. Uh, and there's of course the environment. Um, 
the environment that we work in, the environment that we live in. Uh, and we pay attention to, do we have enough greens in our environment to really help detox the air? Do we open our windows regularly to detox and clean the environment that we live in? Cosmetic products, personal care products come into, uh, you know, play a role when it comes to detoxing uh, our lives at environmental level. Uh, so the perfume that we put on, um, shampoos, deodorants, things like that, do they contain, uh, you know, certain ingredients, they can disrupt our endocrine system. It can put a burden on the hormones and create that, you know, internal imbalance in the hormonal health. So that, you know, those are the, um, those will be the things that I will recommend people to pay attention when it comes to detoxing environment. Uh, as well as our clinic products at home in our kitchen for our bathrooms, uh, they could contain, you know, um, toxins, uh, even though we think that we're actually cleaning, you know, it can actually then back, backfire on us uh, as through the inhalation and through contact with the skin as well. But I always encourage, which is the big one, is to really pay attention to the mind, our thought process, uh, not to hold resentment and to clear that, to balance the mind, and also um, not to judge, criticize, including ourselves, as well as um, not to be infatuate with others. So uh, that the whole thing can create imbalance in, in the mind and also in the individual as well. When you say infatuated, with others can you clarify give us a little bit of clarity on that absolutely so it's like you know you you like someone so very much you only see one side of them and you just admire that one side of them so well so much that you instantly want to become that individual you want to live like that individual um, and then that makes you not authentic because you're not living your authentic self you're not being your authentic self and that can create imbalance in the mind and put us more in the imminent mind and the um, the transcendent mind can become imbalanced with the you know in relation to our you know um, imminent mind so we want a good balance there and to you know really as much as we can to balance the mind to operate from that um, transcendent mind, that creative mind, uh, that authentic objective mind. So Zara, what would you say would be your tip, your top tip for our audience to take with them today? Absolutely, so paying attention to mind, body, our thought process, our nutrition, our environment is very crucial. Uh, when it comes to, you know, I just want to add in the nutrition because I didn't say too much on that one. Uh, it is important that we take care of our liver and your, our gut. My favorite one is actually beetroot juice or beetroot salad um, and also raw aloe vera. Uh, I consume that particularly personally myself. So the beetroot really helps to support the gut health, you know, to move flush toxins out as well as taking care of the liver. So um, the other thing will be pay attention to our clinic products at home. Be very mindful of what our clinic products can actually create internally in our environment and also what effect it can have on the external environment for the other livings in the ocean as well. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And for more information on Dr. Zara Chelik, and detoxing your life, then please go to her webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And we'll see Dr. Zara back next time on how to eliminate fatigue. Now we'll finish up for today and we'll see you back next week with interesting guests and topics.